Hi, I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Thanks for choosing to watch this clip from our Small Town Big Deal YouTube channel. For full episodes, go to our website, smalltownbigdeal.com. Now, enjoy the video. We have planted ourselves smack dab in the middle <laughs> of St. Joe, Indiana, population about 500. And we found the one place in town that's sure to leave a sour taste in your mouth. It is a hot bed of activity that's also cool as a cucumber. St. Joe is nestled in the northeast part of Indiana, about 20 miles outside of Fort Wayne. Not far from the town's small center, past its water tar, are a sea of cornfields synonymous with the northeast Indiana landscape. But there is a spot where no corn has grown for over a century, and that's because another crop has reigned supreme. Everybody loves pickles. So it just brings a smile to your face. By the time Max Troyer bought Seckler's Pickles in 2007, it had established itself as one powerful pickling plant. Since 1911, copious amounts of cucumbers have been transformed into a favorite fermented treat. But even by then, pickles had already been pleasing palates for centuries. It's been said that Cleopatra attributed some of her beauty to a steady diet of pickles. Napoleon fed them to his army, believing they kept his fighting men strong. And Thomas Jefferson thought they were the way to beat the heat during Virginia summers. There's little doubt those historical figures wouldn't pass up on a chance to uncap the pickle-making secrets of today. We know we won't. If there's one bad rule, we have to wear hair nets, no matter how they make us look. If our producers schedule one more shoot where I gotta wear a hair net, oh, I'm gonna kill them. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> Seriously, you should. <laughs> wow, there's so many of them, Max. Our first stop, huge cypress tanks getting filled with cucumbers. Max explains they preserve them by a brining process. You add water, I'm assuming? Water and uh, salt and salt. calcium chloride, and that's just the three simple ingredients. That's it? Yep. How much salt in that, in that whole big vat here? Uh, 3,000 pounds, maybe. You wouldn't want to eat these pickles right out of the tank. They're, they're really salty. Yeah, you'd really pucker up. Those cucumbers have to sit in that super salty brine solution for at least three to six weeks before they are fully preserved. But did you know? They could store cucumbers in there for up to two years and keep them preserved. So this is also your storage then for the year? This is our storage, so like in the winter we'll bring these pickles out of the tanks and use them to run the factory throughout the year. So that you're in production all year long then? We're running every, every day of the year. Once the pickles are fermented, they are brought to another tank where they are given a special overnight bath to remove all that excess salt. Then it's off to quality control. Any odd-shaped or cut-up pickles will be sorted out and cut into relish. And they look like pickles now instead of cucumbers. Yeah, they definitely have a different color to them. Yeah. yeah. It's quite an aroma right here. Oh, I know. I mean, it totally smells like pickles. Are these already determined what kind of pickle they're going to be, or are you going to determine that later down the line? Right up to the end of the line here, we can put them into a lot of different products. So today what we're making are uh, kosher spears. I thought we had to have a rabbi around to get kosher pickles. Now what makes a pickle kosher? I've always wondered that. We're under rabbinical uh, supervision, but kosher in pickles primarily means garlic. If it has garlic added, it's kosher. So I'm pretty kosher because I have onions almost every day. Ah, Rabbi Rodney has a nice ring to it. I did not realize that's what made a pickle kosher. Boy, the poorly cut spears get sorted out. Kevin does the sorting. The bits and pieces have got to go first. Oh, the little one. Bits and pieces. Or a spear like that. Yeah, see how this one's kind of rough? Oh, oh, running, running, running. <laughs> running, running. Those are a no. Rodney just kept wanting to eat the cucumbers. And we can't eat these. Yes, we're not supposed to eat them going down the line. And I think he didn't. You guys did good. There was a lot of pieces in there. You guys did all right. 
Next, garlic is added to make the pickles certifiably kosher. Wow, smell that. You can see that the pickles are packed, never showing their skins. It makes for a prettier pickle jar. What you can't see is all the pride that's packed inside. How important is this little factory to this community? Oh, everybody comes here and gets pickles all the time. It's, they've grown up off these pickles. The average worker packs a thousand jars a day. We work here year round. We work full time in the summer and then part time when okay. school is in. To get a true taste of the hard work done here, look no further than the factory's own store and its sample bar. Those are the orange right there. Going in. They do taste like orange. You know, I have to say the orange was my favorite. I want to go for the apple cinnamon chunk. Okay. Mmm. Tastes like Christmas. For pickle lovers, it's one place where every day is like Christmas. Tucked away in a sea of cornfields, it's the ultimate sweet spot to relish in one of life's little sour pleasures. Thanks for watching this clip from Small Town Big Deal. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and be sure to click the bell so you'll be notified when we upload new videos. Also, click the like button. To see full episodes, go to www.smalltownbigdeal.com.